Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanilungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day, and we've been able to do that thanks to everyone that that's been giving us things to react to who we'll appreciate the links that you drop us so if there's anything that you want to see on this channel drop us a link in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to do it we react to many different things not just religious things but we react to music as well um uh, if you want us to react to skits we can react to skits if you want us to react to just anything that you find interesting be it adverts anything so yeah um We've got a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. <coughs> 2 and you can find our weekly vlogs there. And you can just subscribe and enjoy the content that we're putting out there. We've got um, a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. And we have some amazing conversations. I really enjoy um, making these podcasts because we're talking about something that's happening, something we want. Um, something we have an opinion about so if you have an opinion about something listen to our listen to our conversations maybe drop your opinion and we see how we can start a conversation from there and we've got a patreon called funny and jesse you guys can feel free to become members you can find our podcast on itunes spotify our youtube channel and pod been as well so just feel free it doesn't matter what you're doing you're driving to work you're coming back from work you're cooking you're about to sleep you can listen to our conversations because we we really enjoy making those so yeah a big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing to our channel thank you for fourteen thousand subscribers plus that's fourteen thousand plus subscribers thank you for thank you very much thank you for watching thank you for giving us things to react to and just thank you for sticking around you guys are the best and a big shout out to the person that suggested this and before i get into this please guys check out my blog you can find the link to my blog in the description in the community section on our channel and you guys can just follow those links and check out whatever i've written i really wanted to start something that i was going to be proud of something that's my own without being influenced by anyone and that's what happened with that vlog but blog and so you guys can just head there check it out read you don't have to comment just read i'll be very very glad to know that someone out there is reading something that i'm writing it's just it would just be very very amazing so you check out my blog um you can actually and actually follow me on social media as well safani so l on instagram you can find our facebook a funny and jesse our instagram funny and jesse and just feel free to start a conversation with a conversation with us on those um platforms and we'll um write back to you so as you can tell from the title today i'll be reacting to the difference in salvation christian and muslim perspective so without wasting time let's get into the video having each side present five minutes to give their position first and this week our first speaker will be dr anish sharosh representing christianity so anish I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for saving me as an Arab Palestinian to teach me to love my enemies and forgive them. Only Jesus can teach that. I would like to also announce to everybody who is listening that neither the Quran nor Muhammad can give you an assurance of your sins forgiven while you're on earth. Neither the Quran nor the Muhammad can give you an assurance of eternal life while you are here on, the, uh, on this earth that when you die, you'll have a place in heaven. The credentials of Jesus of Nazareth, the man from my hometown, are authentic and overwhelming. The prophets of old predicted his coming 300 times or more. Predictions he faithfully fulfilled from his birth to his death to his resurrection. Our Heavenly Father confirmed his relationship to him as his son. His miraculous works affirmed his power. The Holy Spirit clarifies this truth to which the apostles and the New Testament testify powerfully. Let me emphasize that God is in reality Jesus. Man, gods have been numerous throughout history. But this is the first and only time that the God man, Jesus the Christ, came to earth. Yet we ask a very serious question tonight. Why did Jesus Christ come if he were a mere prophet? The world did not need more prophets, priests, books, or miracle workers. 
The God of heaven gives us the answer. You will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21 by the angel. Jesus Christ came to save you and me from eternal death in hell to eternal life in heaven. He came to save us from darkness and bring us to light and from hate to love. He himself promised, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10:10. 10, 10. Listen to his declaration. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 9, 10. The word lost is the same as sinner, since God's word states all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us become the object of his concern. Jesus came seeking us particularly when we learn that the payment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. A secret is revealed when we hear John the baptizer, known in the Quran as Sayyidina Yah. He evaluated Jesus with these words. Behold the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. Peter in Acts 4.12 declared, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You say, how is that possible? By substitution, he took our place. You see, the first Adam fought the battle and lost. Thus, all of us, you and I, are sinners. Jesus, the second Adam, fought and won so that we can become saints instead of sinners and free children of God. The treasury of the cross becomes the triumph of the crucified. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may experience the forgiveness of God made available to us through repentance and faith. Why did the ancient Jews bring blood sacrifices to the temple? Why even the Quran encourages sacrifices? Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, Hebrews 9.22. Yet all the animal sacrifices were pointing to the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus, the Lamb of God, whose blood covers our sins and even removes them totally. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Isn't it fantastic? God demands good works as a result of salvation, not to obtain it. You don't have to go to a holy city. Jerusalem, Varanasi, Mecca, Rome, they are too small to contain the majesty of God. Ceremonial cleansing can wash the stain, but never a heart full of sin. God is not impressed with your fasting and mine, your prayers and mine. These often promote self-righteousness rather than humility and holiness. God loves you and wants to save you by his grace through your faith in the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, I give it to you in a nutshell. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross, that at the name of Jesus, we will experience this. Listen carefully. Therefore, as a result of this, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Thank you and God bless you. All right. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Dr. Hussein Morrissey presenting the case for Islam in terms of what is salvation in Islam. You may proceed. Thank you, John. We the Muslims believe in one merciful God, only one merciful God, the God of Adam, the God of Noah, of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. We also believe that this life is temporary is a test and that the true life the real life the eternal life is the one that comes after we die and are raised by our merciful creator therefore we are particular we are keen as a matter of fact we are very fussy to search for the true teachings that came from the true prophets that came from god and we are also very keen to reject 
all man-made theological doctrines established by councils, theologians, priests, and brokers of sal salvation. Islam rejects the dogma of original sin. From the Quran, we learn that Adam and Eve sinned, but they repented, and God Almighty accepted their repentance in his mercy and in his grace. Islam also rejects the dogma of blood sacrifice, which was partially based on the teachings of Paul. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, Hebrew chapter 9. Islam declares that the forgiveness of sin cannot be obtained by the suffering and sacrifice of any other person, human or divine. It can only come by the grace of God. It can only come by the mercy of God. Islam also teaches that you cannot gain acceptance by giving God lip service, hanging a label on yourself, suffer from the hallucinations of the cult of reassurance by declaring that you have gained your salvation in this life at a particular moment and based on a particular experience. The Quran prescribes the same exact formula that was taught and practiced not only by Muhammad and Jesus, but by all the prophets. Work on your righteousness through Faith, number one, faith in God. And then your deeds and your actions, if you have true faith in God, will be a reflection of this correct faith. As a Muslim, I am comforted and assured to read that Jesus practiced and believed in the same exact salvation. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, we are told that Jesus said, Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you will never enter into the kingdom of God. In the book of Matthew again, uh, in chapter 9, 19, we read a story. A young man comes to Jesus, good master. What good thing shall I do to gain salvation for my soul? First, Jesus corrects him. Why do you call me good? There is only one that's good, and that's God. You want to enter, gain salvation for your soul? You want to enter into the kingdom of God? Two criteria again. Faith in God and follow God's commandments. He did not speak about the shedding of his blood. As a Muslim, I am further comforted and assured to read the same exact message on the lips of David advising his son Solomon in the Old Testament. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Now let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Have faith in God and follow God's commandment, for this is the whole entire duty of man. Indeed, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, this is the whole duty of man, to have faith in God and to follow God's commandments, not only according to Muhammad, not only according to the Quran, but according to Jesus and according to the prophets in the Old Testament. In the Quran, we read the same message loud and clear in chapter 2. For those who have faith in God, faith, again, faith in God, and do righteous deeds, there will be no fear to come upon them, neither shall they grieve. So as a Muslim, as a true believer in God, and a true believer on all the prophets, including Jesus, may the peace, mercy, and blessings of God be with them all, then I am assured that I am on the right track. Thank you. Thank you very much. And when we return, we will have our discussion between our panelists, so please stay with us. Let me ask you a personal question. What convinced you, as a Palestinian Arab, surrounded by Islam, to one day believe that Jesus was God, and that he had actually died on a cross, risen from the dead, what made you believe that and place your faith in him? Hopeless, homeless, fatherless as a result of the war in 1948. I was seeking an answer. And the Holy Spirit of God convicted me. This is his job. This is work. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And in the privacy of the room where I was staying, the whole family was living in the same room. They were gone. I was by myself. I knelt down and I asked God if he's for real to show that to me. And if he really can help me, would he show me how? 
and he led me to open the Bible, my mother's Bible, and open it. It fell on the word, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto, unto you. In contradistinction to what our friend was saying, righteousness is the righteousness of God. You see, our works are filthy rags. We cannot be saved by our works. If we can, there was no need for Jesus to come, no need for the cross, no need for sacrifice, no need for anything. You see, if we can do it. If a drowning man can save himself, there is no reason for him to cry out, save me, save me. So I asked God to save me, and uh, through his Holy Spirit, he came into my life, and I was born again, born from above. My life was changed, and so changed that I could love and forgive. And I learned a lesson of praying for my enemies and learning to love them. It was Jesus and Jesus alone who said, it has been said of old, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, as God, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, Pray for them that despitefully use you. And God changed my life so I can love others and care for others. And as a result of that, I'm a changed person, not a perfect person. And I have the assurance of eternal life because he promised me, as Jesus said, with the words that are so ringing throughout the centuries, for God, soul of the world, that he sacrificed his only son, that anyone believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I found in him eternal life, and him security, salvation, cleansing from sin, and a promise of being with you. him forever. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Jamel Badawi, how can Allah, who admits that man is sinful, or has broken his law, if he is just, and if he does have laws, which you say that he does, when a person breaks those laws, how can Allah let people off and still be just? You see, the, the main issue really, and it's a legitimate question, how God reconciles his mercy and justice, because both of these are attributes that are accepted by Muslims and their Christian brethren. There is no difference in that. There is no difference, by the way, unlike many people say, that in Islam, salvation is only by works or righteousness not by grace the prophet did not say that the prophet said the opposite of that grace is above all but righteousness of course is needed belief also and faith in god is needed as well but the reconciliation in muslim understanding is quite different we believe yes that god is just and merciful but according to a hadith qudsi god says that my mercy prevails over my wrath and my anger number one in another hadith also, the, God says that if you as a son or daughter of Adam come to me with an earth full of sins, but you come to me sincere and associate none with me, I will forgive you and that shall not mind. And Muslims see that as good reconciliation between justice and mercy. Number one, it is justice because God who created us, created us with weakness, with inclination to sin. And he knows that. How could he expect wow. us to be perfect? <laughs> On the other hand, because God is merciful, he should That's be willing well. to forgive us if we repent to him and really change our lives and get that new strength and new power to follow the path of God. And that's why the Quran says, whoever believes in God and have faith in God, God will guide his heart. So to us, okay. the reconciliation is very simple through repentance and sincere change in our attitude and behavior. Okay, so let me just throw one on the table then. Jesus said, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. John, that's I mean, Luke so, and that's Jesus. So John, it is, it is you, a Christian problem now that you have two contradictory statements. In one passage, it tells us that Jesus taught about salvation through faith and following God's commandments. The, the one that you are quoting, it tells us that Jesus taught through the shedding of his blood. Now, it is the function of the Christians to tell us which one is correct. And do, which do you one think is that's a contradiction? Of, obviously, it is a contradiction. One, that say one, some final, one final question to you fellows, and that would be this, because then we're out of time. Is that, in listening to you tonight, a thought came to me that it went like this. You have said that God perfectly protected and gave the Quran. God, you said, was also the author of the Bible. Now, if God is the author, as you say, of the Bible, and he could protect the Quran, why didn't he correct and why didn't he protect the Bible itself that he gave? The answer is right in the Quran. 
the Quran when it says that the people of the book were giving the opportunity and the duty to preserve the Bible. It's not but the when it, people. Let me complete. Let me just complete. Chance to, let me just complete. To finish it, yes. That according to the Quran, the responsibility was given to them by God. They could not fulfill it. But when it speaks about the Quran in Surah 15, it says, "Inna nahnu nanzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun." We, Allah says, we reveal the Quran and we are going to take care of it because the other people who were given the responsibility failed. Number one. Number two. We cannot say even that God did not protect the Bible. As I said earlier, we Muslims believe that the Bible contain in part the word of God, the parts that are consistent with the final revelation, the Quran. So ultimately, at the end of the game, really, the word of God as revealed to all prophets has been protected through the Quran. And that's why the Quran in the verse that you, you cited in all a different right. program. We're out of time. God Dr. Dr. Arshur, the prescription one, one, by the Quran. Thank you. One final word and we're done. Well, it's, this, this is a very interesting game of back and forth. Uh, we affirm that everything in the Quran that agrees with the Bible is trustworthy. Yes. <laughs> right. Only we only. look at it the other way around. <laughs> and the question is how one true God give us two holy books that contradict each not, other. Not contradiction. Contradiction right. is the creation of human theology. Yeah. yeah. Not of we God. God does say, not contradict. And we want to say theology. human theology. <laughs> you're yeah. not doing any theology. Gentlemen. I refer to the Quran directly. Gentlemen. You've got to take my word for it. That's wait, wait, what Muhammad wait, wait. said. You've got to take my word for it. No, me, that's your allegation. <laughs> And you're wrong let me that. say, let me say thank you to all four of Thanks you for much, being God. our guests tonight. We say thank you for sharing with us thank from you. your heart. This was a very, very amazing video. I enjoy uh, things that um, want to show the differences, but also talks about the similarities. At the end of the day, we've got not we've got but there's texts in both books which agree with what the other says what the quran says what the bible says let's always focus on the similarities at the end of the day we're praying to one god so if there's anything that you guys want to say about this video let us know in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to read your feedback and write back to you otherwise i enjoyed listening to this and a big shout out to the person that suggested this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video